Hi everybody, how are we doing? It's uh, another Wednesday and it's 8 o'clock and tonight's live demo is certainly a wee bit different. Obviously we're celebrating Scottish food fortnight, food and drink fortnight even. And for anyone that doesn't know what that means, it's an annual celebration for two weeks in Scotland. We totally celebrate our amazing food, our amazing producers, our our farmers, our fishermen, everybody that works in the food industry to make Scotland's food amazing. So we take this two weeks to really celebrate that, talk about it, stick our chests out, and be really proud of the amazing food that we've got. Um, I'm in a lucky position where I get to do that a lot. I get to promote Scottish food. I get to tell everyone how amazing it is. And I totally believe that we produce some of the best food in the world. You can find some of our food in menus all over the world, New York, LA, Sydney, Dubai, Tokyo, you'll see that word Scotland. It's a real badge of honour when you uh, when 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 a chef uses Scottish produce abroad. Incredible. So we've got a lot to cook, um, a lot to get through tonight. Um, what I want to do is to try and showcase as many ingredients as possible. Um, we're using the uh, first dish I'm going to do, or the first dish we're going to start is a beautiful Scotch lamb rack. So this is like a proper prime cut. This is special occasion stuff. Beautiful little rack, uh, beautifully French trimmed from S. Colin and Son. And that's a local um, butcher to me. It's in Muirhead, uh, winner of best butcher of the year and for many years has provided me with uh, my steak pie thanks to my mother-in-law and new year so um, fantastic butcher a, a massive success story and one of the real heroes of lockdown um, so the first thing I want to do I want to get some potatoes on um, so I've got some just some sliced baby potatoes I'm just going to pop in this wee dish so guys there may be some people on tonight that isn't normally on um i like my demos to be interactive so if anyone's get any questions just pop them in and my wonderful wife sharon will ask the questions over because i don't see them and again as always my beautiful daughter laura is behind the camera Say hello, Laura. Hey. Well, you're even quieter tonight. What's wrong with you? Those of you who know Laura know she's really quiet. So we just got a, a, a little packet of uh, baby potatoes. To that, I'm just going to add some onion. And what I wanted with this dish was just a really simple but super, super tasty potato dish. With some nice thinly cut onion. So again, if anyone's got any questions, whether it's about what we're cooking, about Scottish food, um, about Scottish food fortnight, just uh, ask away. So a little bit of onion. I'm also going to slice in some garlic, so nice, just super thin slices. Any questions so far, Shazza? Someone's asking how you do the best way to cook lamb. I'm going to show you, definitely. Um, to be honest, there's different ways of cooking lamb. It really depends on the cut. Um, so you'll find that kind of prime cuts like the, the rack that we're using here is a really quick and simple roast. Um, anything, any other kind of cuts, loads of different cuts, very, very uh, versatile meat, um, great for braising, shoulders make amazing um, sort of long and slow braising dishes. To that, I'm going to add some lamb stock, and this is just a wee lamb stock cube. I'll just pop that in, so it's about half a litre, I'm just going to pop this in the oven. I'm going to catch that 
hay là vì quá luôn Who have we got in the next show? Who do we know? Okay, we need to start playing with Hampshire. Lovely. And we've got Turkey. Oh, nice. Okay, Jen, back on tonight as well. Who have we got? Jane. Jane, lovely. Back tonight. Some, some regulars. Um, the last few demos I've been doing, I've had an invited guest. So I think the last one we had this uh, young lad, a famous, famous Look, YouTuber. This is back as well from Holland. Fantastic. Um, we've got Stephen who wanted to know what your favourite Scottish British group. Oh. Um, Non-Scots. For what? Non-Scots. My favourite for non-Scots? Mm -hmm. Non-Scottish dish? Oh. Your favourite Scottish dish to cook? Oh right. Um, <laughs> um, I think the one, especially when I cook it abroad, is uh, langoustines. I'm doing them tonight. Uh, langoustines always just, you know, I go over, I go, I, I, I go over to the states. I'll do a ten course menu. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll do loads and loads and loads of work in, in all these dishes, different crusts and different elements, and showing off kind of chefy stuff. And uh, I'm going to show you how simple langoustines are, but they always win the show. They, everybody just goes bananas for langoustines. So langoustines are good and dead easy. Um, another dish that I do a lot is uh, cullen skink, uh, smoked haddock, potatoes, onions, a um, bit of milk, and uh, pe people abroad just absolutely love it. And uh, dare I say it, haggis. I, uh, I've, I've smuggled haggis into every continent in the world. Um, and again, take it to India and in in Malaysia and in Kuala Lumpur and places like that. And they, I don't know if it's because they've heard of haggis and think it's rubbish, and then when they taste it, it's amazing. So it kind of um, you kind of trick them into liking it, right? So right. So we're doing uh, roast rack of lamb caponata, uh, which I'm I'm going to stick on just now. I'm going to do smoked salmon kedgeri. So I'll talk about kedgeri when we're doing it, but it's a kind of stolen dish. It's a kind of, I dare I say, a kind of British Indian dish that the Scots have kind of stolen. Um, again, it's always a winner when I go abroad with that. And langoustines. So, caponata. Um, just really like a little vegetable stew. Uh, it's not Scottish, but we've got some courgettes. Some diced courgettes, some onion, some celery. So there's a, a lot going on tonight. And then the sort of main ingredient for this is aubergine. Now can I urge people to, to cook with more aubergines? I think folk walk past them in the supermarket and just wonder what they are. But they're really, really nice and really easy to work with. We're looking at about a centimetre dice. So this stage here is really important. You know, we're extracting flavour. You know, there's there's a couple of sticks of celery in there as well, which would get bags and bags of flavour. And this is something that goes, this little kind of stew goes with loads and loads of different stuff. Nicely finely diced, probably about a centimetre dice. So the again the the sort of 
the lockdown and stuff like that uh, has been a really a really difficult time for the food industry in Scotland. Um, but I think one thing that was evident that our local supply is vital. Our local suppliers, our local butchers, bakers, fruit and veg merchants, all of these guys stepped up when people needed them. They changed the whole the whole business. They did home delivery. Um, and that, that was suppliers that would normally just supply hotels and restaurants. They kind of changed the whole model. And I think I think that kind of 16 week lockdown just changed the way Scotland looks at food. You know, I think people realise that when they they buy local, they buy Scotch, they buy Scottish products, that it does help our economy. You're supporting your neighbours, you're supporting your friends. Right, last wee bit. So if anybody's got any questions, just type them in. We're just going to let that stew down. So the other ingredients that are going to go in here is a little bit of sugar, a couple of tomatoes, some pine nuts, some sultanas, and some basil. So they've still to go in. The next thing I want to get on is the kedgeri. Find my kedgeri tray. Again, it's got an, an, interesting, an interesting history, um, but the Scots have definitely hijacked it. And it's traditionally made with um, smoked haddock. But again, it works really well. I've got some beautiful May selection uh, smoked salmon that's going to go in at the end. I mean, just absolutely simply stunning. Again, this product's all over the world. So, the first thing I want to do is we take a couple of shallots and finely chop them. Any other questions, Shaza? No? Nicely, finely chopped. Let's go pop that in. Right, so chopped shallots, a little bit of Scottish rapeseed oil. So, got shallots, and again, I'm just going to give them a few seconds. To that, I'm going to add about 250 grams of long grain rice. And again, when I try and do demos, I try and do as much of what needs done live. Just so that people can see. And again, it's down to, you know, we're going to make three amazing dishes in, you know, just probably under an hour. But it's all about that planning. It's about um, 
looking at what you need, making sure everything that, that you need is there. So, that's our rice and our shallots. To that, I'm going to add some curry powder. Then a couple of teaspoons of curry powder. Uh, about half a teaspoon of turmeric and some ground coriander. Uh, there's some rices. Yeah, yeah, I suppose you can. Yeah, if you can cook rice, yeah. Um, because do you know what? I was actually thinking. I was actually thinking tonight of using um, paella rice or risotto rice because um, it would hold up really well. But yeah, you could. I'm popping a little bit of garlic in there. Uh, I'm going to pop a little bit of garlic in with the caponata as well. So we're giving the the spices a little bit of time to cook out. And then I'm going to add I'm going to add about three quarters of a litre of stock, and we're going to keep a wee bit to the end. Again, that's that's a little stock cube as well. Um, but what I would say if you're buying stock cubes is buy good ones. Read the back. See where the, the Indian influence is, we'll get rice and curry powder and all that sort of stuff. But again, I believe it was made or it was invented by the British Army, probably one of the Scottish regiments. So there's a bit of smoked fish going in there as well. Uh, you know what? They, they both work really well. Um, Sometimes getting pale smoked paddock, really nice smoked paddocks, not that easy. Um, again, you can get yourself a, a good fishmonger. Um, Black Glasgow's, Glasgow's got a couple of great fishmongers, fish people and uh, corrigans and places like that where you'll get it in a, in a box of treat. You do have to treat it a wee bit different because the smoked paddock still needs to be cooked. Um, but when we get to that stage, I can explain when the smoked paddock will go in. Versus the uh, Good question. Don't have one. <laughs> right. So back to our caponata. So all of that's cooked down. Next, what I want to do is add. The sultanas. I'm going to add a little pinch of sugar, a little teaspoon of sugar. You can always add more if need be, and some red wine vinegar. And that's going to give us a kind of sweet and sour um, flavour. And we can adjust that as, as we go. We can add more vinegar and more sugar if need be. Again, we're just going to give that a few minutes. Is he? Mm -hmm. What right now? Yeah. Oh, we need to we need to email each other. So any of my regulars will know my last live demo was with was was with Daza. And Daza is a, a young YouTuber who cooks uh, or does cookery videos and he's a self-confessed worst cook ever. 
But um, all his stuff works. And he, he does a lot of kind of funny stuff with food. But uh, what a watch, but not tonight. So I'm, I'm going to pop the grill on. So we've got our potatoes, onions, thyme, garlic working in the oven. We've got our rice with the shallots, the turmeric, the green coriander, the curry powder, and a little bit of garlic. And caponata is at its second stage. And it smells amazing, absolutely amazing. Right, so we're going to let that cook away. The next thing I want to do. I want to concentrate on our lamb. So I said earlier, this, this has come from S. Collins and Son, and that's my local uh, butchers. Um, Butcher of the Year, I think he's probably won it a few times. The, he's so good that when they build new houses in the area, they put him in the brochure and in the advert to say that he lived near this butcher. Um, amazing stuff. Not only is the butcher amazing, the produce he sells is amazing. And what we've got here, as I say, is a, a French trimmed rack of Scotch lamb. And the word Scotch is really important because the word Scotch means that that lamb has been born, reared and finished in Scotland, processed in Scotland. So you know, and it, it also is part of a it's part of an accreditation um, where you can trace it back to exactly where it came from uh, through QMS. Is, is it true that you actually the pots are from? The pots, those two pots are from Argos. So they, they're actually um, pressure cookers, but they're handy as big pots as well, even though I'm not um, pressure cooking at the minute. So they're from Argos. Frying pans online, uh, Nisbets, and most of my other stuff's actually from uh, Ikea, it's not from other pots. Um, when I'm cooking on induction, what happens is, is your pots last forever. You know, these, so that pot there is two years old, and you use it every day and it doesn't have a mark on it. And it's because we're cooking on induction. It'd be different if uh, it would look a lot different if I was cooking on gas. Right, so what we're going to do, this is a little roasting joint, but what I want to do first is I want to pan fry it and I want to render down the fat. This rack here has got a beautiful thin layer of fat. There's not a lot on it. Sometimes it's a little fattier, which again is, is just as good. But what we're going to try and do here is we're going to get this into a kind of medium hot pan. We're going to slowly melt that fat and get that fat lovely and crisp before we start thinking about cooking the meat. It won't take long to cook at all. It's a really quick cook. But this, this stage here is fairly crucial. So we're going to pop that in. Fat side down. So, um, wait a sec, I wash my hands. So, I use um, German dice, so Gustav, Henkel, Wustaff, that sort of thing. Um, I've tried Japanese, I've tried to be modern, but they, they, um, they don't work for me at all, I just can't work them. David Brown here asking if a French trim would explode in your fat. Is a French trim what? Would explode in your fat. No, a French trim is um, remove, removing the, the bone that goes across here and it's trimming up the bones at the top so that it means that when you've cooked it, it means you can carve it and get beautiful, well presented cutlets. And we've got um, Jack here asking, can you this lamb recipe use a lamb shoulder? So, lamb shoulder I would probably cook long and slow. So, a lamb shoulder would be in the oven already, on top of those potatoes that would work an absolute treat. It would take a little bit longer. 
Um, but a nice bit of lamb shoulder, so pan fry it and get it in a nice long, slow oven. Your potatoes would be different after that as well. Your potatoes would end up being almost kind of, um, sort of mushy, which I think would be great as well. So lamb shoulder is a beautiful thing. And what, we're, what we get, what the difference is between um, things like shoulder and the rack is where it is on the animal and what it's doing. So what it does on the animal determines on how you have to cook it. So things like lamb shoulder works really hard on the animal. So when the animal's heads up and down and eating grass and doing whatever it is, the shoulder's, you know, working all the time. So it becomes quite a tougher cut, but it's lo it gives you loads and loads of flavour. Whereas the loin, which is coming off the back, isn't a real working muscle, so it's really, really tender. So, so I've just popped that in, I've just left that alone to do its thing. And I'm going to chop some tomatoes, some nice ripe tomatoes, and this is going in the caponata. Today. I only use a shoulder. I used a shoulder recently. Remember? A shoulder lamb for curry. That was lovely. Um, I can't remember what it was. The thing is, see when you buy decent ingredients, you buy quality ingredients, you know, you, you don't have to do that much with them. The, the, um, so tomatoes are now going in. Again, the lamb smells incredible. So on Saturday, I did, uh, it was the first day of um, Scottish Food and Drink fortnight, and uh, I did a live cook along with 2,000 people from Texas, of all places. Hence the flags. Um, and that was, uh, I, again, I think what it did, just giving that a little bit of salt and pepper. So again, there's a new um, salt coming to the market soon called Blackthorn Salt. Uh, it's simply the best salt I've ever, ever tried. Um, there's a, there's a, a quite a famous um, sort of crystallised salt um, make that people have been using for years all over the world. It comes from south of the border and to be fair it's stunning but blackthorn salt is just head and shoulders above it. It's beautiful. So what so, make the stove is? What make the stove is? It's an A-G-E, A-E-G. So again, I like the stove because we've got a extraction pan is here as opposed to having something um, above your head. The caponata, I'm just going to let that cook out. Pop in some pine nuts. I love, I love doing demos in the house. I love watching people doing demos in the house. And again, it's one of the things I think I'll remember. I think a lot of people remember through lockdown is you get to see it inside people's lives. So on occasion, and I think to be honest over all the sort of demos that I've done is uh, my kids coming through. So the, the kids the kids popping in and running behind me in their jammies looking for batteries and other bits and bobs, but I think it's fun. Right, so I've added a little bit of thyme, a little bit of whole boiled to garlic, and you can see how the fat is 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 rendered, looks nice and crisp. So the next stage here 
is just basically caramelizing all the edges. And when you caramelize food, what you're doing when you caramelize food is you're creating flavor. So all that color and all that caramelization of the meat or the fish or whatever it may be, that is creating amazing flavor. I'll probably be doing more live stuff here um, once we can get more guests in. I'll, I'll, I'll see if we can get someone interesting to, to cook along with. Once we come back out of a wee lockdown in Glasgow. I'm going to pop in a little bit of butter as well. Again, you see chefs using butter a lot. Again, I always use butter at the kind of end stage because I want to get that caramelization done. Now I'm going to pop I'm going to pop the lamb on the potatoes. I'm going to take a little bit of all those lovely juices and flavour over the top. Rapeseed oil, you know, a good quality um, Scottish rapeseed oil. Right, so this is going to go in the oven. Um, I reckon we're, we want to take this, if you're looking for a really nice pink lamb, you're looking at a temperature, a core temperature of about 53. Um, it's going to depend on your oven, how you like your lamb cooked, and all of the, all of the above. But I'll try and show you the stages, um, or explain the stages as it Cooks. Um, so at Christmas, uh, again, I get asked a lot about Christmas. Um, and my humble opinion on Christmas is that we should be on the carpet playing Lego with your kids. So, for me it's, it's all about organisation, it's all about making sure that we have nice food, but I also make sure that I'm spending time with the kids. Because you can, you can do your kind of gourmet, gourmet dinners any time of the, the, the year. Don't get stressed over Christmas. And to be honest, I'm a traditionalist. Um, I, I do I do turkey. It's the only time of the year um, where you can get a chance or, or really we, we use it at home. Um, one thing I would also say is a, a good welfare um, bronze type turkey is, is what would make a massive difference there. And get, a, get your prep done. Before. Always used to say Christmas Eve, get everything organised, ready to go. But I can't do it anymore because my youngest son was born on Christmas Eve, so I now just push it back to the 23rd and it, and it works a treat. Must be stopped. Right, so let's have a wee look at our rice. 
It's a beautiful colour. Still got a little bit of bite in it, which is important. I'm just going to pop in the last of that stock. This is quite an unusual product. It's um, it's from the, the guys at Lock Shine, um, and this is like the, the best bit from the side of salmon. And this is cold smoked salmon, and it's been taken off the whole side, uh, so you can do stuff like this with it. Right, do you know where John's getting that from? Right? G1. So, John, nice to see you, my friends. Where's your videos? Get your videos up. I've not seen any of your videos for ages. Um, I used to work for a, a, a massive uh, restaurant group. And as I say, I think Christmas is really, really special, especially when you've got as many kids as me. And. Uh, it was always touch and go to whether or not I was going to get Christmas Day off um, because you never knew if, if there was an issue in a restaurant or there was a problem you would have to kind of leave home and go sort it but what I used to do was Christmas morning would always start with a bottle of champagne and if anyone ever did phone us and because I had amazing people like John Quinnaman and the team, um, I never ever got a call on Christmas Day. Everything ran for, you know, seven or eight years that I was there. Everything ran perfect. So I never ever get called out. But as I say, it was touch or go in some places. Right, so that is that smoked salmon in. To that, I'm gonna add some Shetland mussels. And these, I've just steamed these earlier. And they're cooked so they don't take long and technically the salmon is ready to eat also so we don't want to cook it too long if this was smoked haddock i would have probably put that in just a little bit earlier so we've got some flat leaf parsley Here. Um, I think Irish smoked salmon's good, but it's not as good as Scotland's. Um, you know, the, the, again, I don't, I don't know, I'll be honest, I don't know much about Irish smoked salmon. I've never had the need to buy Irish smoked salmon. I'm sure it's very, very good. You know, it's coming from a very similar climate. Um, but what I, what I would say about Scottish smoked salmon is that the legislation involved in grown salmon is the strictest in the world. So, you know, the Scottish fish is slow grown um, and has, has been in the water probably double the time that most other. There's John also, the drift you can all be anything. Good, John. John would be good fun. John would be good fun. I think the next time in there, actually. He's getting old, Sam. No, he's. Is that a flat cap with grey hair and a beard? No, I don't know. But there's no beard, that's what it is. There's no beard down the top of the beard. Well, you never had a beard for years. No one had a beard for years. Right, so, New Hampshire as well. Hi New Hampshire, New Hampshire, I shouldn't be doing this tonight, I should be packing to go to New Hampshire tonight. Maybe not, we bit early to pack. Well, 
Yeah, you can. Uh, again, good question. Where's my salmon? So, a couple of different types of salmon here. So, I wanted to show you that that last one, the, the, the fillet. But that's regular cold smoked salmon. And this is kiln smoked, kind of hot smoked salmon. You can see the difference in the colour. And the difference between the two is this one's had heat, this one hasn't. So, this is cooked as part of the process. You get really lovely, uh, strong, smoky flavour from from when it's when it's hot smoked. Um, just love it. I just love smoked salmon. Our lamb's looking great. Right, that's done. The next thing I want to show you. I'm going to move this board. Is our lovely langoustine dish. So I'm going to make a little, just a little salad, just very, very quickly. I'm going to make a little um, fennel and pea salad. I'm just going to do a. I think that's the first time John Clinton's been on. Has John been on before? Has he been on before? Right, so we're going to take a little bit of lemon zest. Nice and thin. Again, langoustine's a beautiful flavour, but it's also one of these kind of showstopper dishes. Um, you know, if you're having a dinner party and you've got people round. If you're allowed them around, so we're going to pop in some lemon. Some lemon juice. We're going to pop in some peas. Rocket, and then I'm going to put in some fennel. So the fennel, I'm just going to run through a, a mandolin. This is a bit of a fancy mandolin, um, kind of French mandolin. But you can use a kind of Japanese or. Neighbours have been loving the doing the uh, demos at home. They all get fed mostly. And my eldest son Callum, he loves it. He sits upstairs and waits to the last second. As soon as that camera goes off, he's at the door. Right. All of that just works. So I'm going to finish that off again with some beautiful. Scottish rapeseed oil, blackthorn salt, and a little couple of tons of pepper. So, just going to mix that up a little bit. Again, really super simple, little fennel, rocket, pea salad, so Lord, how are we looking in there? So we're going to 
works there. But again, this is traditionally a kind of breakfast dish. And, you know, it always kind of puzzles me a wee bit. But in India, this would be a, a perfect breakfast dish. And for that, I'm going to add some boiled eggs. So, super runny boiled eggs. Again, if I was doing this for a, a fancy function or dinner, this would definitely be quail eggs. I'm just going to finish that with a little bit of dough. Again, it's chefs of a certain age who use dough. The youngsters tend not to use it for whatever reason. And that is our first dish. So, so may select Shetland mussels, tangerine. So lamb's got a, a few degrees to go, so that gives us a chance to take a look at our langoustines. So, so as I say, langoustines always a winner. Super easy to prepare, they're fun to eat, and they've just got that real um, touch of luxury. So 80% of all langoustine in the world come from Scotland. And you can buy them all over the world, you can buy them um, fresh and frozen. So to, to prepare a langoustine couldn't be easier, again this is a wee bit um grotty so just half them straight through the middle and these langoustine have been frozen so you can you can cut them you can defrost them cut them in half and fundamentally pop them under the grill for a few minutes and you've got the most cautious showy off starter ever so we're just going to lose just a little bit a little sack behind the head that you lose. Again, not a lot. This is one more you probably don't need a close up. But I see you spotted that. Again, a fantastic ingredient, super easy to use, actually, really easy to buy. Um, I've actually seen them in the supermarkets and that. Mussels are traditionally in kedgeree to be honest. It's something I, I always do because I love them. But you can just leave them out. Um, depend Again, depending on what part of the world you're from. Um, if you do like shellfish, uh, things like clams and stuff would work um, really well. But again, you could, you could leave them out. Um, and the... Uh, Oh, there is. 
Uh, there's a little bit um, over the years, some customers will sit and uh, and get every single little bit of meat out of them. So there, there is definitely meat. It's more a kind of crunch. You can actually crunch the shell. Um, what, the, the shell isn't like a, a crab. It's, it's a lot softer. So I'm just going to pop them under the, the grill. So we're looking about 180. Oh, definitely the veins always always got to come out. Always take the vein out. Again, some chefs will just split the split the tail and leave the head whole. Um, but I think I think in order to in order to cook that tail properly, you need to split the head or the head's going to be raw. And again, there's a lot of meat in the head as well. So, lamb is out. Just going to let that rest. The caponata is really came down. I've not even tasted this yet. I'm going to get the uh, some basil in there. Chives and chop them as well. We're here. So the lamb at the moment is, is resting. And what that means is, is we're just letting everything settle, everything sort of relax. And the purpose of that is that if you let it relax and settle, it means that all the, the moisture and flavour won't fall out. I prefer it to be a wee bit more sort of sweet and sour. I'm going to pop in a little bit more vinegar, a little bit more sugar. I'm going to pop in a little bit of salt as well. It's actually quite complex flavour wise and texture. So you've got some tannins and pine nuts. Don't let your guests be the first people to taste your food. And again, when you're learning to be a chef, you have to learn to taste. You have to learn to automatically, instinctively taste your food. And it's a skill, but it does become automatic. It just it just becomes a, a total, a total. Uh, I don't know. It's like. When you're driving and you press the clutch, when you first learn to drive, it's really difficult to remember everything, to remember to press that clutch as you're changing gear. But once you learn to drive, and once you're driving a few years, it just becomes like automatic pilot. A little fennel salad, pop that there. We're going to get the, in fact, we're going to do some chives. Right, <clears throat> so we're going to get the lamb. Let's pop the lamb on the board. I'm just gonna about a wee second. So, just gonna cut between the bones. There we go. And 
the smell of this lamb is absolutely incredible. So we have beautiful braised potatoes. <laughs> I think you'll have to fight Cameron for it. <laughs> I always make dinner before um, before I do these for the family so that everybody can get settled and do what they need to do. And uh, it's just done done me by Cameron every week dinner when he normally does. And there we have a stunning uh, no, I normally give it away. I actually feel it's funny when I cook like this at home. Um, I feel like I'm 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 I'm, in, I'm at work, and uh, as a chef, you're always feeding someone else. So um, I probably get as much pleasure feeding other people as I do feeding myself. I'll take I'll take what's left. I get scraps and pick and, and stuff like that. And I, I normally don't get hungry. Till about midnight after a demo. Again, any chefs that are watching, you know, if you've been working the whole night, you're tasting and it just kills your appetite. And it's not until you kind of put the key in the door when you go home that you realise you're hungry and you haven't eaten the whole day. And then that's when you go home and you'll be cooking beautiful Scotch lamb and salmon and mussels and stuff like that all day. And then you go home and have beans and toast. So. Well, Stella, Stella would certainly know because she does a lot of cooking for people. Where we live, um, we'll get out. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I could take the abuse. I think Stella would just take over. I would just take a seat. That would be good. Used to do one with Stella. <laughs> I know the legend Stella. Everyone that normally watches my demos will have heard the name Stella. Um, I think, again, lockdown's been funny because where we are, we've got amazing neighbours and, you know, you've got an even tighter sense of community when you're uh, looking over the fence. But, um, so again, a real, this is a kind of real showstopper dish that I don't think could be any easier to make. Um, and again, when I, when I used to travel and used to you know, do ten course dinners for the, the you know, for for uh, the, the great and the good around the world, and then you put langoustines out, and all people talk about is the langoustines. But um, always make sure they're on the menu. So beautiful, beautiful langoustines. Little salad, a lamb, a kedgeri. And that was everything, wasn't it? Did I forget anything? No. No. I did. What did I make? I think I did. Salad's there. Thing there. Kedger and Tapinata. Here we are. In an hour. Very easy. But amazing ingredients. Uh, Scotch lamb. Uh, Scotch lamb from my local butcher. And beautiful langoustines. We've got the Mesa Lex smoked salmon, Shetland mussels, uh, just really good, simple, amazing Scottish produce. And trust me, if you're not in the industry or you don't really know Scottish food that well, we truly are world class at what we do. Um, when I travel abroad to promote our amazing produce, I can stand there with my chest out and say how amazing it is. And what I tend to do, no matter where I go, the night before, uh, Google Scottish salmon, Scottish beef, um, langoustines, I check out the menus and I just rhyme off the three Michelin star restaurants in New York or LA or wherever it is that I'm going and it's enough, they do the, they do the selling for you. So we get amazing produce, uh, you know, keep it local, you know, these guys done the whole country proud.
you know, our, our trollermen and our, our farmers and, and our processors and, and butchers and our, our fruit and veg merchants and all, everybody that really sort of dug in to help everyone. Wouldn't you laugh next year? No. <laughs> so guys, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, this is the first week of the Scottish Food and Drink Fortnight. So get on the website, have a look at what else is going on. Tomorrow night is a whiskey tasting, so I'll be tuning in for that. Um, but again, support local, get out into the, in the, in the restaurants and uh, let's get the, the Scotland's food back up and running. So guys, it's been an absolute pleasure and uh, see you all soon. Bye bye.